binary search tree search complexity so far we have looked at the operation of searching in a binary search tree now we will look at the time complexity for the same so let me start by taking two examples of a binary search tree this is my first example and this is my second example now when we search in a binary search tree we first start our search at the root we compare the value we are searching for with the value at the root if that value is less than the root we search in the left subtree of the root if that value is greater than the root we search in the right subtree of the root and if that value happens to be equal to the root we return that we have found the element so first let's think about what could be the best case for this algorithm the best case scenario of a search would be if the first element that we check is equal to the value we are searching for so the first node that we check in our search algorithm is the root node in that case if we are searching for one in this tree it will return immediately that it has been found if we are searching for two in this tree it will check the root node and return immediately that it has been found so in both cases the best case takes exactly one check when we are searching for one we will check the root node and return so one check when we are searching for two we will check the root node and return so one check so in both cases the best case takes one check now let's look at the worst cases the worst case would be if we are searching for an element which is stored at a node that is the furthest from the root node because then we will have to make the maximum number of checks to actually reach that node so in this case the furthest node from the root node 1 is 3 and in this case the furthest node from 2 is either 1 or 3 it's equally far apart from 2 so let's look at the first tree the worst case is when we search for 3 so let's see how many checks that takes we go to the root node which is 1 3 is greater than 1 so we go to the right subtree of 1 we go to the root which is 2 3 is greater than 2 so we go to the right subtree of 2 we go to the root of the right subtree of 2 which is 3 3 is equal to 3 so we return true so there are how many checks happening 1 2 3 checks so in the worst case which is search of 3 we have how many checks we have 3 checks let's look at the case for this tree so the worst case it can either be search of 3 or search of 1 let's take search of 3 so we go to the root node 3 is greater than 2 so we go to the right subtree of 2 3 is equal to 3 so we say that 3 has been found so how many checks that does that take one two checks so over here it's important to note that for the same elements if we arrange the tree differently we are getting better search times in the first case we are using three checks and in the second case we are using only two checks so why does this happen this is because in the first tree 3 is further away from the root 
than in the second tree. In this tree, 3 is 2 edges away and in this tree, 3 is only 1 edge away. So what we can say by this is, the worst case complexity depends on how far the furthest element of the root is. In this case, how far 3 is from its respective root. So if we are trying to find out how far the furthest node from the root is, this reminds us of the definition we gave for the height of a tree. The height of a tree gives us the number of edges from the root to the furthest leaf. So the height is going to give us how far away that furthest leaf is from the root. In our case, the lesser the height of the tree, the better the search complexity is going to be. Or in other words, we can say that the search complexity is going to be order of the height of the tree in its worst case. So we can say that in worst case, search is order of the height of the tree. So now let's go back to our examples. Let's look at this tree and let's try to find out the height. 3 is a leaf node, so its height is 0. Then we go here. 1 plus the maximum height of its children, so 0 plus 1. Height of 2 is 1. Then we go to the root node. 1 plus height of maximum of its children, so it's 1 plus 1, which is 2. So the height of this tree is going to be 2. The calculation of height has already been handled in a previous video. So the height of this tree is going to be 2. And how many checks are we making in the worst case? We are making 3 checks in the worst case. So the number of checks is going to be 1 plus the height of the tree. Let's go to the second tree. The height of this tree, the height of 3 and 1 are both 0. The height of 2 is going to be 1 plus the maximum of 0 and 0, which is 0. So the height of 2 is going to be 1. So the height of this entire tree is going to be 1. How many checks are we making? We are making 2 checks. So it's going to be 1 plus the height of the tree. So to accommodate for this 1 which we are adding to the height, we are going to add a layer of dummy nodes or external nodes. So this is going to give a boost of 1 to the height of the tree so that we can say that the searching is order of height. So let me give the dummy nodes. These nodes are called external nodes. They are the leaf nodes of the tree. Their height is equal to zero. They do not have any data stored in them. These nodes are initialized, but their data does not have actual data stored in them. So they are called external or dummy nodes. On addition of these nodes, let's see how the height changes. So in this case, the height of the dummy node is 0 because it's a leaf node. So the height of 3 is going to be 1. The height of the dummy node is 0. Between 0 and 1, 2 will choose 1 and add 1 to it for its height. So it will be 2. Between 0 and 2, the node 1 will choose 2 and it will add 1 to get 3. So the height of this tree is going to be 3. That is, it's going to have 3 checks. Let's look at the other tree. The dummy nodes have 0 as their height. So its parents are going to have 1. And 2 can choose from either of them and have a height of 2. So this tree now has a height of 2 and it has 2 checks. So 
the lesser the height the lesser the checks that is the lesser the height of the tree the lesser the time complexity of the search algorithm so what is the worst orientation of the tree that will create a maximum height something like this where we have all the elements in a line so what is the maximum height the maximum height of a tree with n elements is going to be n this is provided the tree has these external nodes otherwise it would be n minus 1 but we are looking at it for this case so we have three elements the height of the tree is 3 which is the maximum height this tree can come to so the worst orientation of the tree which produces the maximum height for a tree with n elements is n provided that the tree is padded with external nodes now we have to look at what is the minimum height of the tree or what is the best orientation of the tree that will give us the minimum height we can say that for a tree with n nodes the best height for the tree or the minimum height of the tree will be log of n to the base 2 floor value plus 1 this is going to be the minimum height of the tree when the tree is padded with external nodes if it did not have the external nodes it would just be log to the base 2 n floor value let's see how it works in this example we have three nodes log to the base 2 of 3 is going to be a value that is greater than 1 but less than 2 so 1.5 something so the floor value of that is going to be 1 1 plus 1 is going to equal to 2 which is going to be the height of our tree given that it has external nodes so this is the maximum height and this is the minimum height. So with the maximum height our search algorithm will be order of n and in the minimum height our search algorithm will be order of log n. So we are trying to construct a tree with minimum height for the best complexity of a binary search tree. So it is important to notice what kind of tree it is that gives us the minimum height. A tree which gives us the minimum height given a certain list of elements is going to be a balanced tree. So a balanced tree is one that ensures that no two siblings are more than a height difference of one apart. So no two siblings, that is two nodes of the same parent, are more than a height difference of one apart so if they have no height difference that's fine if they have a height difference of one that is also fine but the minute they have a height difference of two then it is no longer a balanced tree so let's look at this example if we look at this set of siblings this external node and two the height of the external node is zero and the height of two is two so the height difference becomes two Therefore, we can say that this tree is not a balanced tree. Now, if we go to the next example, nowhere does the height difference exceed 2 or exceed 1. These two have a height difference of 0, 1 and 3 have a height difference of 0. So, this tree can be said to be balanced. And therefore, since it's balanced, it gives us the minimum height. Since it gives us the minimum height, 
it gives us a search in order of log n time. So what we should take away from this video is that when we are creating a binary search tree, we should always try to create it in such a way that it is a balanced tree. So how do we always ensure that the tree is balanced no matter what we um, input, what elements we input into the tree? We can do this using an AVL tree. We will see how an AVL tree works in the next few videos. But this is how you analyze the search complexity in a binary search tree.